Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Berean TV. I want to answer a couple of comments that um, came in concerning the black church um, and the black church failing the community. I want to I want to speak a little bit to that because there's so much of the same stuff coming in. I figure I'll I'll just try to do a, a, a public reply to it. When we start dealing with the church, a lot of people have criticisms towards the church, but we have to understand the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is in general, this is the church in general, the Catholic church. And when I say Catholic, I mean the universal church, believers of all hues, all colors that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or believe on the Messiah and came declaring the kingdom of heaven is at hand and who and who Jesus is, Jesus being the Christ, the deliverer of the world. I don't want no comments from no Israelites. Jesus is the deliverer of the world. Now, when we start dealing with that, that is the purpose of the church and the church has been doing that. But historically, in the African-American church, because we've been going through certain things in this country with segregation, with racism, coming out of slavery, antebellum and all of that, there was a, a, a unique role that the black church played. Even when we came out, the black church was the black Christians were treated different by white Christians. So in part, a lot of what we're going through um, in the church today, we can blame on some European evangelicals. They may not like that, but this is just how it is. I remember Dr. Mason saying something at Thrive. He said, suppose the white Christians, the real white Christians would have would have got to the slave, the southern blocks with the slaves and would have turned their backs and said, that's not right what y'all are doing, selling other human beings. What would the, what would the history of this country be like if white evangelicals would have stood up? If white evangelicals would even stand up when they see when they see black men being gunned down in the streets unarmed. Every black man isn't running from a robbery, shooting out with cops. Unarmed black men have been disproportionately killed in this country, and white European evangelical Christians not even getting up to say anything. A lot of black preachers will, 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 will see a, a man gunned down, shot 15 times in the street, and he won't even change his sermon Sunday morning and address the issue. So there are some problems. We definitely have to say that there are some problems. And part of it is because the church as a whole have not been living up to that standard. If everybody is a child of God, be it black, be it white, be it Asian, be it Hispanic, we're supposed to all move together as one body. The church wouldn't be so segregated on Sunday mornings as they are. It's a beautiful thing to see a church with Hispanics and um, and Europeans and people of African descent, various people from the Caribbean coming together and worshiping and calling on the name of the Most High God. That's a beautiful thing, but we don't see a lot of it. That's how come when I do see it and I and I and I visit various churches and I would call those names out. I say, oh man, was a, that's a good look to see that because that's what the kingdom is really about. But because of what we've been going through in America, um, things have changed. Now, historically, the black church have been a place to help black people read, help black people get jobs, to get together when we're dealing with like the Montgomery boycotts and various things because of how Europeans have treated blacks in America. The church was always that center place where people can get together. And we're going to strategize how we're going to do that how we're going to do, how we're going to boycott, how we're going to do what we're doing. Now, there's a lot going on financially. I'm going to explain some stuff. And some of my pastor people, some of my church folk not going to like this. But when it comes down to it, I used to pastor church. Pastors are just like everybody else, like teenagers go through peer pressure. Some pastors go through peer pressure. Some pastors want to show off, oh, you got them You got them $900 shoes. I want to get a pair of them Maury Gators. I want to get me a pair of them $1,500 shoes. Oh, the church bought you a Benz for your 20th anniversary. I want me a Benz for my, and, and, and it's a lot. It's a lot of some of that stuff going on. I'm not gonna say a lot for the preachers to get upset. Of course, the majority of pastors I know they're not getting a hundred thousand. They're not getting a hundred thousand a year, believe it or not. There's a lot of pastors out here that actually have other jobs outside of being a pastor because the church money's not enough to take care of them and their kids. And you know, with insurance and all of that, going on vacation, trying to trying to be a regular family man, raise a family and pastor a church. This is just keeping it 100. But there are pastors that have overspent money. 
I know from my personal experience going and preaching and hooping and holler. You could go to some Pentecostal churches. I don't want my Pentecostals to feel that I'm banging on them. You could go to some Pentecostal churches and hoop and holler and walk out of there with $800 because you said a few scriptures and jumped and laid hands on a few people. But, but, but for the most part, a lot of pastors aren't getting paid like that $800 an hour for preaching a sermon or whatever. No matter, a good sermon is going to take five to eight to ten hours to put together. Now, some people are not going to like that I'm throwing money out there. But as far as the black church, the black church has more money than any other single organization. So we need to address how come the black church aren't doing a lot of things. The black church are doing some things in that, um, like I was saying, pastors are under peer pressure. A lot of pastors are under peer pressure. I like something Brother Adam said um, last week in Sunday Seminary, a brother brought out. He said that the black church is not the center anymore. The black church is not the center anymore of the black family. And we're going to start dealing with the breakdown of the black family and systematically how the black family has been um has has been treated let's just let's let's just let's just and, and where that comes from that's that might be another teaching right there but when we start dealing with that we gotta we gotta we gotta look at a whole bunch of things we have to look at a whole bunch of things there are a lot of pastors and what they do they know to preach jesus and that is the great commission that's what the bible is really all about but we are in a unique place the black church in america because of our condition so the black church have always um, gone beyond just preaching the gospel where a lot of Europeans they can just come to church this church service can be short they can praise God worship God give a little bit of money and everything is good because their structure their home lives are different from many people in the African American community where they were systematically segregated and pushed out of certain things and this is just this is just the reality of America so the shaping of the black Christian church in America is a little bit different now, when it, when it comes to a lot of people talking about pastors, pastors, and that's what they do, teach and preach Jesus. A few pastors have been to seminary. Other pastors have been trained under other good pastors, so they didn't really need seminary as much. And um, there are other pastors. You, I often teach you can't go beyond your pastor. If your pastor's not a reading, deep-thinking person, and we have different pastors on different levels. That's just how it is. If your past is not a deep reading, thinking, cultural person, understanding certain things, he's just going to say this is the way the world is. But if he begins to understand history systematically, how things have been done to a specific people, he's going to add that into a sermon. And if the Lord tarries, let's say Jesus not coming back. Let's say Jesus not coming back for another hundred years. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I've been since my grandmother, they've been saying the day of the Lord and the Lord is coming back. When you start dealing, if you understand the day of the Lord and a, a day is like a thousand years, Jesus just left the other day. So that, you know, so when people say that, they don't understand scripture and timing and things of that nature. And people's always been thrown off with that. But if the pastor don't understand and research certain things, he can't bring it out and he's not going to preach on that thing. There's some people that are teachers and we researched. I, I, I research. I, I, I look into things. So if I'm talking on the Council on Foreign Relations, the Committee of 300 and the Bilderberg and different things like that, other pastors would say, well, I know in the last days the Bible says men will be in Centers of evil things. I know Psalms 2 said that it is some type of conspiracy against the Lord and his Christ. So when we start looking at um, Singer and we look start looking at Planned Parenthood and we start looking at Darwin and the doctrine of evolution being taught and various things and, and really it has to do with racism that one ethnic group is above a different ethnic group and I start looking at Helen Blavatsky and Hitler and Thule Society and how they're looking for the blue-eyed white ones that they call ascended masters and Old folk just call that devil worshippers and wickedness that's going on. But there are some people that research and get into the depth of those things. So as far as the black church and what the black church is doing, can the black church do more? Absolutely so. Now, this is where the church folk are going to have a problem. Some, some, some churches can definitely do more by way of housing, by way of education. A lot of times we have pastors and, you know, a denomination thing is not really good. A lot of people caught up, well, I'm Baptist, I can't work with those Kojic people over there and even within their own denomination. We basically all believe the same thing. So don't let them Israelites in the conscious community fool you. Oh, he Baptist and he Presbyterian and, oh, they got whole different. No, 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 we don't. No, we don't, liar. We don't have no different doctrines. Little small things, stuff that, that's irrelevant. 
but we can work together. And and part of the problem is a lot of pastors say that when we start getting into that color thing, they don't, it's not either they don't really know any better or they just want to focus on doing the kingdom mission that we're all one and the same. But we're not treated, we're all one and the same, but a lot of believers that are outside of the black church do not, no matter how you cut the cake, like I said, a lot of European good old Christians, good old Christian Europeans or quote unquote Christians, they um they don't have a problem with the white image of Jesus. They don't understand police killing and, and segregation. They don't understand driving whilst black. They don't understand these things. And if they don't have a heart from the most high to understand it, I don't know what to say. So it's like the black church, we've been out here and we've been on our own. But far as us having the money and, and the ability to control, the ability to open up banks, when people in the conscious community, when other people that have a problem against the church make certain statements, a lot of pastors feel you don't even have to listen to them. But I'm asking the pastors and the ministers when they have valid arguments. When someone that is not a believer have a valid argument, can you even take heed to it? I'm, 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 like I said, I often say in multiple videos, I'm so surprised how the black church is holding, how y'all are holding on so strong to the Christmas tree and to the Easter egg. Can we clean up the paganism in the church? That's another thing. If we know people are walking away, if we know people are going to the Hebrew Israelites and the conscious community and just walking away from the church, can we try to clean up the paganism? as people would say from the time of Constantine on. Can we admit Jesus wasn't born on the 25th and even open up the floor in church for discussion? You'll be surprised how that'll help you out. Your pastors, you'll be surprised how that'll help y'all out. I just wanted to drop this short video. Black church, we need to do more. I know we're doing a lot and we're and it seems like we're overtaxed. We're trying to help. We're trying to, you know, do this and that. Some people say it's because of the influx of drugs. We had a lot of heroin in the 60s. And certainly heroin's coming back, but with the crack, and we know the story, if you're a researcher with the real Rick Ross, the CIA government bringing drugs in, COINTEL, the dr government attempting to destroy um, a certain ethnic group of people, flooding Compton, flooding California, certain places um, with drugs. Y'all go back, y'all can, can read up the story on the real Rick Ross. Come to find out it's good that it's the government that's bringing the work into, into the country, and it's the government that's giving up certain, um, putting certain drugs in certain neighborhoods that seems to be like it's a known fact right now and we can go back to even to Clinton the, the, the documentary with the Clintons and how the, how people that were associated loosely with them were involved in Arkansas and bringing drugs in from South America and stuff like that it's a whole bunch when we start dealing with mind control and MK Ultra all of this stuff a lot of people say well what does this have to do with the Bible we can't be ignorant of the devil's devices this is what the writ tells us so there's certain people that's researching and bringing this information out and it's real, plain and simple, it's real. Could a black church do more? Absolutely, we can do more. Pastors, y'all need to step it up. Um, as a matter of fact, can we um can we give more? Can we help more? One pastor said, um, back in the days, a good educated dude too, PhD, educated, educated brother. He said, the church is not a bank. Well, that's that's so crazy because um and he's right. And let me say that, first of all, he's right, the church is not a bank. But if grandma been going to church for 30 years and grandma need her lights turned on, the church needs to take care of that. Everything is not inside the Bible. That's how come there's a wisdom and a mind that the creator gave us. A lot of people say, well, if I don't see it in the Bible, I'm not going to practice it. If you know a bunch of young guys um, are hanging out in the streets and they start getting in trouble, why can't you open up the church doors and have an after school program for free for the single mothers? for low-income families. We could do something for free. We could do something for free in the church. Like, we want to charge for everything, from chicken to fish to bus rides, that we doing everything. But there's other things that we can do if we see a need. You don't have to see directly within the Bible, oh, that, that lady right there, she had a fire. She can use some new furniture. She can use some men in the church to go over here, over there and help her remodel that thing. Oh, that's not the church's job. If there's a need, that's the church's job especially among our own and our own community. I'm going to leave it right here for now, but I just wanted to drop this short video and try to explain some things. My name is Brother Berean. If you like what you heard, subscribe. Thanks for watching.